look, that answer, I, I think more, he's, he, he's speaking to the player. He's not speaking to the fan base. Right. right? Like, I think that's what we have to all understand is that from a, an answer to the masses, that doesn't make a lot of sense. If you're speaking directly to Deshaun Womack, I get that. Like, I understand that. Right. And I think speaking that into the public is, you know, probably a humbling moment for for the player because you're coming off of, you know, five plays where you created three pressures and a sack. <laughs> I mean, like you got to be curious, you know, kind of like laying in bed at night. Like, what more can I do? What coach? else could I do? Could right? I like, two I mean, if you play me more, who, who who's to say what would have happened? So uh, if he's speaking the message to the player, I get it. I, I got to believe, though, internally. When, when watching film and just kind of understanding the lack of production that has come from that spot, and then you throw this, this kid in there, and automatically you get you know lightning in a bottle, where you, you got to continue to play that. Like, put that out there and, and give yourself the best chance to win the game, right? Like, that's what it ultimately comes down to with the argument of playing the best players. I know there's a process for young players getting on the field. I know there's a process for transfers that have to come into a program and learn culture, whatever it takes to get onto the field. But once that criteria is met, and once there is an understanding that there is buy-in from that player, at the end of it, if he can play, you got to play him. Right? Like, I mean, I understand, like, off the field, there's lessons and things that you have to learn to understand to be a college football player. But ultimately, if he steps in and he is more advanced than the competition at his position, then he's got to play. And all of that stuff of the development and taking care of the stuff off the field and the process of what he's going through is still happening. Right, I mean, like, there's he's he's still inexperienced if he's playing, but he's gaining that experience of what you're talking. I mean, uh, all that you're doing by not playing him is extending the inexperience talking point. At some point, you got to throw him into the pool. You got to throw him out into the field, and say, "Look, it, you're the best guy for the job." Sink or swim. You're going to have to go to class. You're going to have to be at the meals on time. You're going to have to be accountable to your SWAT team leaders and everything that it takes to be an LSU football player. And you have a smaller amount of grace, or you may have a larger amount of grace that's very small because you're new, because you're a freshman, because you're young, because you haven't done it. So they're going to, we're going to hold your hand and walk you down that line, but you're playing. <laughs> I mean, like. I don't know if, and he probably was. He was probably trying to just kind of be lighthearted. He's trying to take the air out the room a little bit, easing the tension. In the sense joke. of like, you know, we got to teach him how to buckle yeah. his chin strap and stuff like the helmet. Like, if you watch that highlight, he had his helmet knocked off. His motor kept running. He got to the quarterback and took KJ Jefferson to the ground. And guess who he got his helmet knocked off by? Pert, because they met at the quarterback. Mm hmm. And if you want to play like the other side of what Brian got. I think a lot of people get upset with the, the phrasing in which how he says you're not getting on the field, right? It's like you got to do the little things, right? Things that LSU, like things that you don't see if you're not in the building. And I think people are kind of tired of that. I don't want to call it an excuse, but that phrasing of what does that mean? Like what are the little things that he's not doing whenever you see him play? Like that's – if you're talking to the fan base as opposed to the player, all LSU fans see your results. And if you keep hampering those results from happening, it's going to be a hot-button issue, and you can't really joke about it because people want to see Deshaun Walmack play. But in the same sense, I think what Brian Kelly really is doing is protecting Walmack from himself. In 100%. 100%. And that makes sense from a leadership position. And look, this show was very loud last year about the same thing with Harold Perkins. Right. Right? Like, I mean, you saw somebody who did something great, and you wondered where they were consistently. Once Harold Perkins got out there – a lot of the time, you saw in the run game, he, he was a liability. And there were teams, Tennessee and, and others, that really schemed against him to try and take him out of the game. I understand that. And those are freshman moments that are going to happen. Deshaun Walmack is a guy that, look, he, he's obviously very good at getting to the passer. There, there's something that is limiting his play that the coaches have not yet come around on on trusting him completely to put him out there the majority of the time. I get that he's probably deficient 
in, in some of the other things that it takes to play the position. And that's ultimately probably what Brian Kelly is saying without saying it. Right. But in the same sense, it's got to be more than five snaps. Right? I mean, like, like, like I, I, I understand his side of saying, like, if you put him out there for the, you know, you, you put him out there for an entire series, he's going to get exposed in some down and distances. Okay. I get that. But there's got to be more than five reps for him when in just five reps, he can give you all of that. Thanks for tuning in to our premium LSU content right here on YouTube. If you want more of it, subscribe below.